Hi, I'm Bridget Trelaw from Sydney Seafood School at Sydney Fish Market. And I'm here today with Sean Preslin from Saki Restaurant. And we are going to be talking about a Hiramasa kingfish. Look at this beauty. She's a cracker, Bridget. Um, Hiramasa kingfish, massive fan, high oil content, local produce in terms that grown in Australia, um, indigenous to Australia, farmed in Port Lincoln, South Australia, um, versatile in that. And do you find a difference between the farmed and what might be wild caught? Um, the fat content? The, 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 the farm stuff is consistent all year round, 365 so you know exactly days. Yeah, I know exactly what I'm getting. Um, pretty much we use the belly side for raw stuff and we use the shoulder for cooked stuff. You can actually see a bit of a difference, can't you? With the belly, with the higher fat content, it's a slightly lighter colour, isn't it? Yeah, it's gorgeous. But today I am going to cook this pan sear it in a pan, get a nice crispy skin on it. So you're actually going to use both sides? I'll then? use both sides. Yep. So, so I've, I've pin boned it, which means I've taken the, the centre line of the pins out the bones out. And one of the good things about Hiramasa kingfish is the bones come out really quite easily and they're quite big so there aren't all those fiddly little bones that's which it. is there's, great. There's, there's, one, there's one line of bones. So look, that's a, a handsome portion, two mm -hmm. pieces each, but one piece each. The little trick I'm going to do now is flour, Ooh, flour. one side. Now this is plain flour? Just plain flour. Right, and what's the point of this? Once my skin is crispy and it's cooked out of the oven, I'm going to add a sauce. Right. And the sauce is going to stick to the flour. So, so how look. hot do we need the pan to be when you put it in? I've got a, I've got a non-stick pan. Um, so I want my skin, my fish, to stick down to the pan to get a lovely crispy flat That's not skin. what you normally hear. No, we don't normally want the skin to stick. So why do we want the skin to stick? So it crisps up. I want, I want crispy skin. So don't be worried that it is sticking to the pan. No, no, embrace that. Embrace okay. that because when the pan cools down, the, um, the skin will pop off. And what I like to do is heat up the oven to 180. Mm -hmm. When I start seeing a nice sort of brown, crispy edge form on the, on the sides, then I put it in the oven. You can also start seeing on the side here, it's turning white. Okay and that'll start moving up through the flesh as it's, as it's cooking. So that's showing you where the cooking's get, getting yeah. up to. Although the belly is thinner, and it's gonna take less time to cook, there's more oil, there's higher fat content, it's um, not gonna overcook. So it's like the marbling that you get in, in beef. Yeah, it's um, very forgiving. It's a forgiving piece of fish That's to cook. what everybody, every cook wants to hear that. But it's quite interesting, I don't know if you can see the color in this, but you can see it's quite white here where the belly section is compared to quite dark there. And it's actually getting lighter as it's cooking with that oil in the belly section, so look, lubricating it. Starting to go a little bit brown in size. I'm going to give one last little push. And don't do this if you're at home. Please well, use an use, egg slice yeah, to hold a, it down. This is a chef thing. Okay, that's going to go in the oven. Okay, 180 degrees. 180 degrees. While that's cooking, I'm going to do a little garnish. A little garnish. A little garnish, so. <laughs> okay. Um, now, what temperature do we need this pan on? Still just, on low? Just on low. I've got some butter, which I've whipped until it's split. Okay. I've added some chives, some kombu, and I've added some soy sauce. So kombu, that's seaweed, so you can um, just... It's obviously finely chopped, is it? Yeah, finely chopped. You can pick that up at your Asian supermarkets, okay. And what sort of soy sauce? Japanese soy sauce? Yes, some koi kuchi, some dark soy sauce. Okay. I've got a, shi a couple of shiitake mushrooms. I've got some shimeji mushroom. So we're using fresh shiitake, so a little bit lighter in flavour, though it's a strong flavour, it's, it's, it's a lighter flavour than, say, your dried ones. Completely yes. different texture, isn't it? I'm a big fan of uh, cloud air mushrooms as well. Oh, no, if, I saw if, some if that were yellow and blue the other Ooh. day. Yes, they're doing them specially for chefs. Okay, some enoki mushroom or straw mushroom. So, so we're just going to melt the butter. Just going to melt the butter. I'm going to toss those through. Gonna so we keep the enokis till a bit later because they are probably only need a last little bit of cooking at the end, do they? Yeah, they don't. They don't need much cooking. They just need warming. Yes. You just have to look at them and they'll cook. Um, some chives. So just mix this through the butter yep. once it's melted. So it's pretty simple. So we're going to have quite simple flavours because the fish itself has really got lovely, delicate flavours. It's a, it's a sweet tasting flesh, quite buttery with the extra oil content. So um, let the hiramasa be the, the the king of the dish, as you say. Yeah, correct. 
Well, that's one of the good things about here, Massa Kingfish, that it's, it's a good solid fish that holds together well, regardless of what you do with it. So whether you're having it as something that's uh, sashimi where it's uh, raw, or you're going to cook it, it's still going to hold together. But when you do go to eat it, it's quite big flakes, isn't it? Lovely mm. to eat. I mean, it steams well, it um, barbecues well, pan, pan sears well. That's what you want. A versatile fish you can use for everything. One stop shop. So look, garnish done, really, really simple. Put that to one side. Okay. I'm gonna get another pan, start heating this up for some sauce. This is a really rustic um, teriyaki sauce. It's called a kuayaki. Mm -hmm. um, so when you say rustic, what does that mean? What's in it? Um, I haven't had to reduce it as, as you would a teriyaki sauce. So, and this is sugar, some dashi, some mirin, some sake, and some soy sauce. Okay. Um, it's going to reduce in the pan. You can see it's quite... We turn it up a little bit? Yep, or you, turn yep. that up. And how reduced do we want it? That's quite liquidy, so what are we looking for? I'm going to pull my fish out, put it flesh side down. Oh, wow. Now, what are you looking for? When you touch it like that, what are you looking for? I'm looking to see that the flesh is firm and it's cooked. Okay, so that's where your way of telling. Yep. So, so it hasn't stuck to the pan. Oh, beautiful. And that flour that I put on, this, on the skin side is going to thicken the sauce just a little bit as well. So you're not going to put the sauce on the skin because the... the I want to keep... My, we took a lot of trouble to get some nice crispy skin and I want to keep it that way, especially when I'm eating it. So that's beautiful. reducing very quickly. Um, if it reduces too quickly, you can always add another, another spoon of sauce. Okay. Because that is fairly sweet, mm -hmm. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of ginger juice in. So this is your fresh ginger juice, because I don't think you can buy ginger juice as far as I know, right. so you just grate up your ginger and just squeeze out grate the juice. Grate up your ginger on a microplane or a, a box grater and squeeze mm -hmm. out the juice. Um, again, that gives it that, yes, that sort of aromatic. It, even from here. And ginger and fish are amazing friends. So if I run my finger through, through that on the back of a spoon. It just holds. It's nearly there. I want it the consistency of honey. Again, if it's, if it's going to burn or it looks like burning, just throw some more sauce in or put some water in. So look, for me that's Perfect. pretty much spot on. With Japanese food, it's always best to plate up the mountain. So we have our high... Ooh. Watch out. Yep. Our high bit up the top. Really shows off that crispy skin, doesn't it? I'm going to nape the sauce on the plate rather than over the fish. It's stuck to the, to the, to the skin of the fish, so I know there's flavour there. And then I'll finish with these, um, this little mushroom garnish. So once again, probably not going to put the garnish on top of the fish, I assume. No, just to the, just the, to the side. At the bottom on the side. Adds to the mountain look. That's it. And then on the very top, I've got some leek, which I shredded and I washed with some red, yellow, and green capsicum. Just so for a little bit of extra color? Yeah, I'll just put that up the top as the little clouds. Fabulous. So that is my pretty much rustic Hiramasa Kingfish teriyaki, but it's a, yeah, pan-seared Hiramasa Kingfish kuayaki with butter soy mushrooms. And basically it didn't take that long, but those flavours will go together with the Hiramasa Kingfish so well. Oh, they do, they do, they're lovely. Terrific. Lovely. If you'd like more information, please go to our website, sydneyfishmarket.com.au. There's lots of information about our classes, and you can even come and do a class with Sean. So he comes to us, what, a couple of times yeah, a year? Yeah, a couple of times a year I'm here. So please come and see us.